Hi everybody, I'm Carl from Rolling If You Got Him, and we're going to go over the A Song of Ice and Fire mod for Tabletop Simulator. This is the second time I'm recording this video because I just did it a minute ago, but with my mic muted the whole time. Fun stuff. Alright, so, here's the mod. What it looks like. You have a lot of your earlier stuff. They used to do this kind of boxes things so you come over here and pull your units out of the box pull your card out pull the bag out which it had, had these old don't use them use the stand-ins doesn't look as great it functions way better okay so getting started here we're gonna start with some basic tabletop simulator stuff so right click, drag around the map. Pretty simple. Zoom in, zoom out. You pick something up. Q, E, rotate things. You just tap them. Okay, but that's not how you'll do your pivots and stuff. We'll get into all that. Um, Alt key. So let's say I want to look at this card over here. Instead of messing around with my camera. Zoom in way in. Okay, what does it do? No, no, no. You don't do that. Hover over it. Hit the Alt key. Pulls it right up for you. You can zoom in. Zoom out. This works, as you can see, for literally everything in the game. So, if your opponent has, um, so these are all his units over here. On their side of the table. And you want to look what they do. There you go. Alt key. It's hard cards. Um, if you go download the mod right now, it's an updated version. They cleared up the uh, Targaryen cards here, so they're a little easy to read. I have not updated the version just yet. Um, lift height. You want your lift height to be somewhere in here. You don't want to get it up high. Because when you have models on your tray and you're lifting it up this high, that's when you get those the things that people are afraid of tabletop simulator for. Models falling off, pieces flying everywhere, you know, like this, see all that? That's not good. Bring that lift height all the way down. You shouldn't just throw your tray anyways, and you won't be able to. After deployment, you hit this little battle ready button and it kind of locks the tray in to where everything is through buttons on the tray the tab key hold tab move around you can measure stuff um, it's pretty much only needed for ranged attacks go to the front of your tray here all right are they within 12 or 14 really um, yeah like all right if I shift over two inches all right now where is my 12 inches at once again, the battle ready button takes care of all that stuff. The undo button, generally a no-go. It gets a little crazy depending on how much stuff is out. Try not to use the undo button. I've had it work with success and I've had it work in a massive failure where you're like, oh, I guess we're going to quit playing now. Oh, I accidentally clicked on it. That's a good one. Yeah. That's how you bail yourself out when you go, oh, I'm just going to undo that and it doesn't work. Maybe we'll mess around with it here at the end. Um, so we're not going to use the D3. That's D3, just for the panic test stuff. So I grab some dice here, highlight the ones you need. So I need five die. Kind of spread them out a little bit because for the most part they're going to go straight up, come straight back down. You don't want them on each other. You just tap R. There you go. There's my die. If you do get them leaning on each other, let's see if we can make it happen here. doesn't look like it it's rare it does happen though but if you just hover over it it'll tell you what face it is technically on okay so this one here so click off of them all right it is it's, it's on a six me I'm gonna roll that die pass or fail 
I'm gonna tell my opponent like, hey, I'm clearly I'm gonna reroll that. But if you just drag it off, drop it straight down, it'll go to what it was supposed to go. I'm gonna reroll that one. Um, occasionally you'll see dice roll like this. You'll be like, huh, it looked really weird. That means you tapped E instead of R. E, they're just gonna go to whatever's next. So this one here, to a two, to a three, to a four. Two, two, three. This one will go to a six. Or, or I mean, a two. A six will go to a one. That's what R looks like. That's what E looks like. If you look at the hands here, you can add more hands for a multiplayer game. So right now, there's white team, pink team. There's the black, which is the game master, which only the host can be. And then there's gray, which is a spectator. If you wanted to play a three player game, four player game, whatever, go over here, zones, hands. Click and drag, right click, change color. Now you just added another player to, to the game. There you go. And someone can be green, for instance. <clears throat> Okay, so we've already said a lot of the earlier stuff is over here. Actually, all the Lannister stuff is over here. All the Stark stuff is over here. Neutrals are there. You will have Starter Box, Night's Watch, and a little bit of extra stuff. I don't know why that went in my hand. Here, Starter Box, Free Folk, a little bit of some of the early stuff there. Then you go to this side of the table. You have your Free Folk Heroes 1, Free Folk Dice, Night's Watch Heroes 1, the Stone Thrower, the Scorpion, all your Targaryens, and your Baratheons are over there. <clears throat> so, alright, you grab your units, you're like, alright, I'm running three units, Warrior Sons, today. <coughs> Alright, three units warrior sons. So come over here. Now, if I just grab and pull, I'm gonna pull one model out of this bag. Click, hold on to it for a minute, you'll pick up the whole bag. You can drag it over here, pull out one model, set it on the table, copy and paste that one model. Control C, control V. Easiest way to do it. Sometimes it's so hard from an angle. <clears throat> there you go. I do not recommend taking this model, putting it in a tray, copying that, and then pasting it to all the other trays. I've seen a bug before to where if you do that, when you move this tray, all the models that were copied and pasted from that tray are going to move with it. So the tray will still be here, but all these models will move on their own. All right. This battle ready button. This is one of the things that keeps this mod from having that terrible tabletop simulator aspect to it. So hit the battle ready. Now, I cannot just pick this tray up and move it anymore. The models, they're not just going to go anywhere. Unless you click this little red button on top. That's how you remove models. So, a tray is battle ready. You can place activation tokens, order tokens, and panic, vulnerable, and weaken tokens. You just drop them right on the edge of that tray, and they'll float above it. To remove them, you just click on them. You cannot click on them from behind the tray. Doesn't work. It has to be from the front. So usually activation tokens, you click your opponent, he clicks yours. It's all good stuff. To, I wanted to change the colors of some of these. Let's say I was playing Free Folk today. There are free folk trays, maybe not. Some of these have trays, some don't. Okay. Highlight them, 
right click, color tint, I'm playing free folk, click on green, pick something, there you go. Now you have green trays. Rotate them all together. And now you can start putting your models in there. <clears throat> um, sometimes you'll run into a thing. Let's see if I can get it to happen. Where you'll have a model go upside down with another model in the trays. So let's see if I can make that other thing happen too. So basically, it'll end up like this. Easiest way to un mess that up is just kind of hover over one of them, tap F. Okay, they'll end up like this. This is tap F, then you can click and move it out of there. Okay, they may have fixed the bug, but still. I set one on the table, copy and paste from here, and then I will set that model just off to the side. That way later, if I heal them guys, right here, copy, paste wherever I need it. Alright. It, uh, it's just simpler. I think it's just something that I got used to, because it used to be a certain tray set on the table <clears throat> that we thought did it more often. We were never really sure. Okay, your hand. So your hand is this area. Kind of already showed it right here. So white, pink, green. You put stuff in your hand. Your opponent cannot see it. So let me grab my Lannister cards here. All right. Um, by the way, if you just click and drag, you're gonna pull a card from the pile. Click, hold, you'll pick up the whole stack. So here's my 14 generic Lannister cards. I'm not going to worry about commander cards right now. Set them down right here. Tap F to flip them over. You just hover over them. Don't click. You can tap R. That'll shuffle them. Or you just shake the cards. That shuffles them also. Just put five cards in my hand. Do that slower. So. Have your cards in your neat little stack here. Okay, you got that shuffle on them. Click and pull one. Bring it over top of your name. Tap F. Bring it over top of your name. There we go. Now, instead of zooming all the way in here to read my cards, and having to come to the side of the table, I can be over here. I can be measuring something. Okay, this applies. Alt key. Or top of my cards. There you go. Now I can read everything that's in my hand. <clears throat> Counterplot, trick and subterfuge, kind of. If you want to search your deck, right click it, search. You can Alt key. Alright, I'm looking for, let's say I was running something that allowed me to pull cards from my deck. Instead of pulling out every card, Right click, hit search. Alright, here's the card I want. Hear me roar. Set it right there on the table. Pick it up. Bring it over your hand. Flip it up. There we go. Bang. You got the card I was looking for, and then you just tap R or click, hold, shake. <clears throat> um, marking deployment zones is super nice in this. Let's get this stuff kind of out of the way here. Over here, right, left side, click the line tool. Let's say we're playing um, Feast for Crows, we have 12 inch deployment zone. Click right here, hold and move down, let it go. There we go. My deployment zone's good. Let's say you want to mark where some tokens would go. Do the same thing here. 66. Tokens are going to be. This is from like the original version of the mod. They still have these in back when there's only five game modes. Just use Game of Thrones one, hit place. Here you go. Here's all your terrain, tokens, objective deck. So 
All right, put a token here. Usually the best way to do this is one person will measure with the hold tab and measure. And then the other person will grab the token and just drop it like right there in the middle. Or you can click with tab still and move that thing over. <clears throat> After you've finished deploying, grab the erase tool, you can remove those lines. Super nice. Terrain. So I have corpse pile, let's do forest, some stakes. Then we will do a token on top of a corpse pile. This should get wonky over here, but it's still useful. So, all right, put our terrain out. As you can see, it sticks up. So if I were to put a unit on that terrain, If I were to put a unit on that terrain, it's going to cause some issues. <clears throat> also, things like that give Tabletop Simulator a bad rep. So, we have this Ready All Terrain button. There we go. Now, the terrain is flush with the table. And you're good. Over here, sometimes the token will not go in at all. Sometimes it'll completely disappear and other times you'll have it where it's kind of at an angle if you want it to be in there okay great you might need to just pan your camera to see exactly where it's at or hover over it alright it says objective right now tap L it'll unlock it it'll flip it up and then clear all terrain hit no Try to ready all terrain again. The uh, I always hit clear terrain and hit no. As soon as we get done ready and terrain, because that prevents you from accidentally clearing terrain mid game. Say you're playing Feast for Crows, place an extra corpse pile in the middle of the game. All right, now it's buffed up there. Hit ready all terrain. Drop it back in. And then clear all terrain and hit no. Okay, next, which we've kind of already seen, the battle ready buttons. These are what makes this mod so playable. So, all right, let's pull some of this stuff out of the way here. Get some units. And we're just gonna kinda... Oh, the same thing for terrain goes, let's say I wanna destroy that stakes there. Hover over it. Tap L, it'll pop it up, hit delete. Um, if you have a unit on it, you might want to move them off first before you pop it up. Keep things from happening. We're going to get rid of this corpse pile just for the sake of it. Alright, so all these are battle ready. Let's say these are legit combat units here. Here's your pivot button. Okay. Super simple. It pivots, I think, 15 degrees. If you need something better than that, find pivot. Gives you a little slider bar up here. Just click and drag. Okay. Let's say I'm going to charge my warrior sons into these followers of bone. Alright, well, instead of going okay I think it's a 6.3 no you just hit this move shift button okay right there clearly it's more than six less than seven so I need a two to charge grab a die roll that die <clears throat> I got a five I got the distance so you'll hit this charge line button and you're just gonna touch the littlest bit to your tray to their tray There you go. Click front, and then you can align up however you want. <clears throat> so you line up like that, and then you're engaged. Uh, also, you have this attack button up front. This gives you your line of sight arcs. So 
if uh, you know, these guys were over here. <clears throat> Obviously, if you were just playing, one guy might go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely line of sight. Another guy measures it kind of here. They take all that guesswork out. Click that button. There you go. They are in line of sight. You got that little bit of tray there. So, yep, I have line of sight. I'm going to charge, pivot first so that when you move in a straight line, you'll make contact. Hit move shift. Okay, you're within five. I'm just rolling to see if I disorderly. Roll die. There you go. Make contact. I'm in your flank. And then line up however there's not a lot to it it's a pretty very very useful mod uh, the people who run it do a great job with it and about all there is to it you can find us on roll them if you got them on Facebook and YouTube we appreciate the follows and the subscriptions and hopefully I'll see you guys around for content next time see you later